lesson this evening is five things to forget. That sounds like uh, something that's not a scriptural sermon, but it is. We just got through singing a song, Dead to the World, Two Voices That Call Me. There are some things that we change when we become a Christian. And there's some things we need to put behind us as we move forward. We've got to strain forward towards the newness of Christ, but we've got to get rid of the old that was holding us back from serving Christ. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So he says, forgetting those things that were behind me and reaching forward to the things that are ahead. There's some change that needed when we become a Christian. There are some things that we need to forget, and we need to let go of and not hold on to. One of them is our setbacks. Well, tomorrow I put my car in the garage where somebody backed up into me and ruined my car door. Hopefully it'll come back and my baby will be as good as it always is on those TV commercials, I'm hoping. But anyway, sometimes we have setbacks that we're not even responsible for, but they happen to us. Sometimes we get notices like this, and that, that's definitely a, a tragic event. We've got to move past that and get up and get on the road again. Sometimes in financial markets, they, they go up and down, up and down, and who can tell what to do there, but we just keep on hoping that it gets better someday. And sometimes it's like this, and you can see us holding together, but we have to let go of the coffee's hands as they move to Florida. Sometimes our friends don't stay where we are. Sometimes people move, and we have to adjust to that. We tell them we love them, we care for them, and we spend them with God's speed, but they're going to move on down the road, and we hope things work out good for them. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26, it says, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We have to think about what is the most valuable thing to us, being right with God or being friends with the world. And we have to make choices, and we have to make these choices to stand with God. And if we choose to stand with man and with the world standards, then we could lose our very soul. And that's something we definitely don't want to do. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8, Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. If you lose some very valuable things to you, but you have Christ, then you stand in a positive relationship with God because you have what's most important. We've got to realize what we should treasure is the things of God, the things that last forever. The things of this earth, well, they'll eventually become uh, moth-written, they'll become rusted, they'll become garbage and rubbish to do away with. But the things of God last forever. The second thing that we need to get rid of or, 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 or not let it pull us down, the five things we ought to get rid of, the second one is our slights. Sometimes people thump their noses at us, uh, kind of so to speak. Uh, they say, oh, you've got to be kidding. You're, you're going to go to that church. You're going to do this thing or that. Well, we've still got to stand with God. And sometimes they get bitter and they treat us bitterly. We have to get up and we have to move on and we have to continue to serve God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 7, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. We give place to the devil, the devil take hold. We don't want the devil to take hold. We want to live for God, and we want to serve him. And so those things that happen to us, the things that other people do to us, the taunting and the torment that they try to give us, that's, that's just temporary. Those things we can get over and we can move on, 
but we're serving the Lord who gives us strength. There's some causes for bitterness that people give us. The wrong mo motives are jealousy. They, they get jealous of the things that the people of God have because they have a hope that lasts forever, eternity. But they have also the wrong responses to irritations or conditional love. They, they want things done their way rather than the things done God's way. And that can make a thing there. In Colossians 3 and verse 19, it says, Husbands, love your wife and do not be bitter towards them. Treat them with respect and not with harshness. Another cause of bitterness is wrong responses to adversary. Sometimes we have to, to uh, realize we have an adversary, the devil, and we realize that he's like a roaring lion seeking to devour, to, to get us, but we need to stand with God and we've got to be careful that we don't close the door on people to come to Christ. In Hebrews 12 and verse 15, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. That root of bitterness can come up within us and it can cause trouble and it can cause things to happen that, that hurt us. And so we need to be focused on the things of God. Another source of bitterness is an unforgiving spirit. When people don't forgive each other, that really comes back on you and it hurts you more than it does the other person. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. If you think about God forgiving you, why can't you forgive your brother? That's what he's saying. We need to forgive each other. We need to move on and we need to serve God and live for him. So sometimes we have to put those things in the past. Number three, sometimes you think this is a weird one, but our successes. We have something says successful happen and we begin to think highly of ourselves. Well, that happened to King Saul. He had gone to war. He had been victorious and began to think of himself well almost like he was God like the victory was his and not the Lord's and he began to get haughty and he began to do things and he didn't want to wait for Samuel so he goes and he, he does what Samuel would have done and ends up costing him his kingship ends up costing him his career ends up costing him his life Whenever we think more highly than we ought to, Romans 12 and 3 says that, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we can have successes in life, but it shouldn't go to our head and make us so swelled up that we can't see the people that we need to serve and to do them, and King Saul should have been humble, but he wasn't humble in his service to the Lord. Number four, our sorrows. We all have sorrow. Things happen to us, but we not, must not let them imprison us to keep us from doing the things of God. We must look for life's pearls. I like that idea, looking for the best in things. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, for I consider the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There's something better coming, and we're looking for that something better, and we know that's heaven, and that glory that we're going to have. And so he says, don't let all this suffering in the present time get you down, but keep on serving because we've got something better coming in, hand, in heaven. Sometimes people let their sins keep them from God, from serving him like they ought to do. We should die to those things, but some people don't die to them. They, they try to keep them within them. They try to keep, I'm going to be a Christian and have this sin too. That don't work. That's not what God's calling us. God's calling us to total obedience to him. So we must let our, not let our sins defeat us. We need to defeat our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than sin. It can wash away our sins. That's what we're taught in the scriptures in Hebrews 12 and verse 1, therefore, since, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such, such a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every way and the sin which so easily ensnares, I like the word entangles in another version, 
ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So we, we, we don't let the things of the past hold us down, but we run the race with the endurance, the ability to keep on going. I call that perseverance, to keep on going even though the tough is tough to keep on going. We keep going. And that's the type of way that we ought to be. So there are some things we forget. First of all, our setbacks, the things that happen to us that we have no control of, we just forget those things and move on past them. We forget our slights, those things, people that don't treat us right. We keep on serving the Lord regardless of how we're treated. We forget sometimes our successes. Now, successes are something hard to forget, but our successes sometimes pull us down. If we get, our, get to thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to, we ought to be humble in our service to the Lord. We ought to move past our sorrows. Sorrows are good and being sorrowful is good, but we need to move forward at some point in time to move forward because we know we have a glorious home with God in heaven. And we shouldn't let our sins hold us down. We need to get rid of sin and live for God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24 it says, Do you not know that those that run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. One of the ways that we do that is to not let these things that I've mentioned pull us down, but we live for God and keep on plugging and keep on serving. Jesus left heaven to come to earth. He dwelt here as a man. He died on the cross for our sins. He gave his life for us. He, died, he, he was buried in the tomb and he was in there three days and God rose him from the dead. He ascended to the Father on high and whenever those men were standing up there on that hill, and Jesus ascended to him said, Jesus is coming back in the same way that he left. So we know he's coming back to redeem us, to bring us back, to be with him in glory in heaven. He says that you might be where my father is. He's gone to prepare a place for us. Let us do the things that are necessary to serve him. If you've not been buried with the waters of baptism, I'd ask you to do that. If you have any need, won't you come while together we stand and sing?